morning Facebook. Um, my husband sent me a uh, audio today of the Breakfast Club, um, and we're not talking about the 1990 or 1985 Breakfast Club in the library. Uh, it's one of the biggest radio shows uh, run by Charlemagne and his crew. If you don't know who Charlemagne is, he's the, he's the radio host that uh, Joe Biden told, if you don't know if you're for Trump or for me, you ain't black. So he's that guy. Um, what, the reason why I listen to it, they typically have, you know, um, people on who are dif have differing views from mine a lot of a lot of Democrats um, but this morning he had um, oh I don't know if it was this morning I think it was he had Rush Limbaugh and now uh, we're big fans of Rush Limbaugh so and the <laughs> Rush Limbaugh being on the Breakfast Club is a um, something to be heard so we all need to have conversations with people who have different views so that's that's important but as I was listening, I realized something, and I want to share my perspective with you. <clears throat> um, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know if I'm on track, if I'm way off base, what's your perspective, and see if we can kind of um, iron out the wrinkles. So I think I finally understand the, diff uh, the disconnect between um, today's white population and the black population who are claiming white supremacy is the, all of our issue, all of our problem. Um, it starts there, it ends there, and there's nothing else. Um, I disagree with that, but when I was listening to Charlemagne and Rush go back and forth, I heard a couple of things that made it very clear what the problem is. <clears throat> the truth is, most white people, I mean, a very high percentage, I'd go 90, 95%. I'm not sure that I don't have any statistics on this, but most white people are not racist today in the year of 2020. This is not 1820. Black people have more white people on their side rooting for them and cheering them along than any other time in history. Um, so when a black individual says that this country is driven by white supremacy or, or that white people have white privilege, what I believe our white peers are hearing is us saying, you're racist. Well, the problem is white people today aren't racist. And so they automatically resist the information. The guard goes up and they want to defend themselves because they're not racist. And what they're hearing is, you're calling me racist. And so it, it becomes this vicious cycle of nobody communi communicating anything because the black people are saying, white supremacy, and white people are saying, I'm not racist. And so nothing gets heard, nothing gets spoke about. Now, this is a normal reaction. I don't blame the white population for throwing up guards and being like, no, that's not me. And I totally believe it. Um, but again, the tables have completely turned. This is 2020, not 1820. Um, so what I think the problem is, is and, and I say this with, with as much love and grace that I could possibly conjure up right now. I don't think the white population knows what they don't know. And I think it's actually the same for the black population too, because um, like I said yesterday, I think a lot of the black population has no idea about their own history. <clears throat> I think all they know is these very strong feelings about pieces of history, but they don't really have the information. And when I was listening to Rush today, he was very naive to things. <clears throat> And here's a man who's much older than me, um, and even he's naive to the, um, the history, the, what we call um, systematic racism. And I can do a video that goes into that. But um, I've heard a lot of new, uh, new terms going around lately from a lot of the white population. I spent a lot of time in comment, 
comment threads and watching conversations happen. And I'm seeing things like we're holding space for you or we are listening. And I believe that. Um, I want to respond with if you're willing to listen, please be willing to hear the hard things and see the rationale and fact behind it. I want you to know that coming from me directly, this is not an attack attack on any ind- individual. Um, it's, it's a hope that we can come together and make beneficial change. Um, I want to go back to 1978. Now, this is when the proposal for um, the right for women to vote first hit Congress wasn't passed until 1920 but I want to point something very very important out about this entire thing the women fought and they fought and they fought to be able to get the right to vote okay but there was one one very critical thing that they had to have it this was critical there was nothing else they would never get the right to vote if they did not have this critical thing and that was men voting for it okay women didn't have the right to vote they could have fought for it for the rest of their lives but if men hadn't voted it in women wouldn't have got that and so I say this to say that one I think that black people need to change the language and how they describe um, systematic racism. Um, But I, I hope that the white population who's willing to listen, willing to hold that space, will also stand up and be the voice that we need to change those bad systems. So systematic racism, in a, in a 10,000 foot overview of it, is basically just bad systems that were put into place by actual racist people that are still affecting us today, okay, by unracist people. <laughs> so we're still using the crooked systems. That is the problem. We're still using the crooked systems. And I can... I think that it would probably be beneficial for me to go into very, you know, one system at a time and so that you can see how the system that was started back in the 1800s, 1700s, um, was racist at the time and how it is still affecting us today. Um, I, I'm hoping that that will bridge the disconnect. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping, you know, um, my heart is to see everybody with liberty and freedom. And I, I mean, mental liberty and freedom that, you know, black people aren't walking around thinking they're inadequate and, and they're not enough. And white people aren't walking around going, I feel so guilty. I, I I apologize for being white. Like, that is not okay. It's just not. None of my white friends ever, or not even friends, people, no white person needs to apologize to me for being white. I want you to be proud to be white just as I am proud to be black. Um, I like the face that I look at every day. I want you to like the face that you look at every day. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I, I'm hoping I'm on the right track here because like I said, I want to be able to bridge that divide. Um, but let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking, what, um, what your perspective is, because, um, you know, like I said, I just want to keep the conversation going. Long, the things that are happening in our country today, riots aren't a new thing. Let me just throw that out there. Riots have been happening since the 1800s, um, 1900s, all through the 1900s. Just riot after riot after riot. This is not a new thing. 
But because of the atmosphere of our climate today, because this isn't an actual racist climate like it was then, um, it's sparking conversations that have never happened before. And I want, but, but history shows that, you know, even after a school shooting, <clears throat> the emotion only lasts for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe, um, if the media can drag it out that long, if they have enough um, content. Uh, but but this, like every other riot, um, every other incident in our country, this will, um, the emotion will wear off and we will move on to our next crisis. Um, we <clears throat> we kind of skipped over mur murder hornet, hornets. Those might come back. Um, we're looking at another wave of COVID. So that's going to be another thing that we're dealing with. At some point, the emotions will wear off for this. And I don't want to stop the conversation. I want to keep the conversation going. And I want people to talk to me about this. I want to know, you know, where do you think I'm off? And I want to be able to educate you on things that you might not know. So um, that's my point for this. Um, I pray that everybody has a um, wonderful day today. It's beautiful here in the Pacific Northwest. So... Um, anyways, yeah.